By the time you get to the end of our seven level strategy, you're gonna be able to read music a lot faster. But first we gotta start at level one, which is mnemonics. So for the lines of the treble clef from the bottom to the top, I remember it as every good boy deserves fries. And the spaces of the treble clef spell face. Moving on to the bass clef, I use the saying, good boys deserve fries always as my lines and my spaces from the bottom to the top are all cows eat grass. Your piano teacher, Tim here, and moving on to level two, which is landmarks. Landmarks is all about picking certain notes that you can identify from sight that you can use as a point of reference or as a landmark. The first landmark I like to identify is C, mainly because, well, first of all, it's one of the first notes you learn, and it's also easy to identify on the staff. Not just the staff, but you want to identify them on the keyboard as well. So here is middle C on a ledger line on its own, and it's going to be right there in the middle. And then the C above that is right here. And the whole point of memorizing where these are from sight is that if you have uh, like a few notes here, for example, say you have these four quarter notes, because you know C is that uh, third space up, you automatically know that that has to be D, that's E, that's B, that's C, because you're using that C as a reference point. You just gotta be careful with the bass clef because the lines and spaces are different. So if you use the same landmark on the sheet music for bass clef, just keep in mind that these are E's now instead of C, and specifically this bottom E is two E's down from middle C right there, and this E is right here. And once again, you use them as a point of reference, even, you know, like with the ledger lines, you'll know that that note has to be D because it's right below E. Another landmark I like to use is F, mainly because it's the bottom space and the top line, at least for treble clef. And the bottom F is right here. The, that top F is right here. Memorize where they both are on the staff and the... Uh, music of course or the staff and the piano and then you just got to be careful with the bass clef that if you use the same one the bottom space in the top line that these are now a's being here on the bottom and here on the top respectively before we move on to level three i just want to point out that you can practice your note reading by getting a set of flashcards on amazon or you can do this by going to musictheory.net clicking on exercises and going to note identification just make sure you click the little gear at the top, select the notes that you actually know. So if you're not very good at ledger lines, you know, reduce them to the staff there. And I would do about 50 of these every time you practice. This one is a G. Level one was mnemonics, level two is landmarking, and level three is the ledger line trick. So once you master the first two things I talked about, you want to be aware of this one simple fact that's going to make your life easier. Here it is. The spaces of a staff are equal to the lines going up off the staff and going below the staff. So what I mean by that is that if this spells face, F-A-C-E, then this is also face, F-A-C-E, just an octave above. And you can use this ledger line trick to figure out the ledger lines really quick. Gee, that one's an E. Now, I also said it's equal to the lines going below the staff, starting from that bottom line. But you got to be really, really careful with this because now, because we're going below the staff, it, we're going in backwards order. So if this is F-A-C-E from bottom to the top, this is also F A C E. So just careful though, we're going to be going down E C A F is that three ledger lines below there. So there's the ledger line trick. There's more to it though. And that works for the bass clef too, by the way, but the lines and spaces are different. But let me show you the second part of the rule. So the spaces on the staff are equal to the lines off the staff. The lines of the staff are equal to the spaces off the staff, starting from the top space. So if this is E, G, B, D, F, this is E, G, B, D, F. And guess what? If we take these down, starting from the top, or sorry, the bottom space going down, E, G, B, D, F, but it's the opposite. So it's F, D, B, G, E. 
And I mentioned before, the same applies for the bass clef, just careful that we're using different notes. A, C, E, G for all cows eat grass. A, C, E, G. Level four, skipping strategy. I want you to start from middle C and skip every other note, every other white key, up the piano and name them. So we'll do this together. So C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C. Did you notice anything? Well, you should have noticed a repeated pattern. C, E, G, B, D, F, A. 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 Now there's a purpose to this. Let me show you what it is. So here we have the lines of the treble clef, starting actually from that C I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the landmarking, that middle C down there. And then we're gonna say the names of the notes that are on the line. We know that is every good boys deserves fries or E, G, B, D, F. And then we have A up here. Now let's say them in order. C, E, G, B, D, F, A. Where did we hear that before? We just played it on the piano, didn't we? And you can use that to read music a lot faster. Allow me to explain. So as you can see, when we were skipping on the piano, it was equaling to skipping on the staff, going up line to line to line to line, or even space to space to space. And that pattern is gonna serve you well. So let me draw a line Question, what is that insanely high note? Well, if you know where middle C is, that's the beginning of our sequence. C, E, G, B, D, F, A. C, E, G. So we figured out that super high note just by using that sequence of notes. You can use that starting on any of the notes, by the way. So if you're starting on the bottom line E, you're, start, you're doing the same sequence just starting on E. So it'd be E, G, B, D, E, F, A, C. E, G, B, D, F, A, C. So get used to saying that forwards and backwards um, because you might have a note on a ledger line way below the staff. So now we have to count the thing backwards. So right, we're gonna start from, um, let's start from C still so we know where that C is. So here's C right there. Then we gotta skip down, that's that one. There's that one. And therefore, this note must be D. And of course, I'm gonna to wanna to remember that because I might not always have the piano in front of me to count backwards. So let's see if I can do it without the piano. This is what I want, how good I want you to be. So forwards first, C, E, G, B, D, F, A. C, E, G, B, D, F, A. Now backwards. C A F D B G E C A F D B E G. Right? Hopefully. <laughs> Question What is this note? We're going to do a bass clef example before we move on way, way down in there. So we're going to use our sequencing technique, level four here, to figure out what notes, what note this is. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tell you where or what note this is. We talked about that note earlier on that first uh, ledger line below the staff. Remember, we talked about it during the landmarking. That is an E. So we're starting from E in the sequence, right? So we're doing E, and then we're counting down this way to figure out what it is. But I'm not going to use the piano. I'm going to try to use my own brain. All right, so if this first ledger line is E, let's see if I can figure out where this final note is. So this is E. This is C. That's A. That's F. And this is a D again. So our bottom note is in fact a D. I did check it and it's all the way down there. So as you can see, the skipping strategy can help you get those notes a lot faster, but I actually have more techniques for you. The next one just builds on that, which is, so level five is interval reading. And we've actually talked about a certain interval when we were doing our skipping technique. And that interval is a third. By the way, the interval is the distance between two notes. So it's a third because between C and E is one, two, three. Between E and G is one, two, three. And that's how you do it. You just count the note you start on and the notes in between and then the ending notes. Now, you can actually read music a lot faster by building on that and being able to recognize other intervals. So here they are. This right here is a second. 
uh, between G and A specifically. And they are so close together that they actually have to like kind of lay on top of one another. So you know a second, no matter where it is on the staff, just by looking at that one simple thing. And one thing I want to point out is a second is an even number, right? Two, four, six, eight. And I want to tell you this one little trick. All even number intervals don't match. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if the bottom note's a line, the other one's going to be a space. If the bottom note's a space, the other one's going to be a line. So they do not match. So two, four, or sorry, that's, that's four. There we go. They don't match. Six and octave don't match. So remember, even doesn't match. So seconds right next to each other, like I said, a fourth is just a little bit more a part of that. You can tell right away that there's a little bit more of a gap in between there and they don't match. So that tells you it's not a third or a fifth, right? So always use that little thing to your advantage. And now a six is a little bit further than that. You can tell that there's a little bit more of a gap here, but it, what am I gonna say next? They don't match. So you know it's an even number. And then an octave, an octave will span almost, almost the entire staff. Um, you might expect an octave to match, but no, it's an even number, so they don't match. So that's the seconds, fourths, sixths, and octaves. That's how you identify those. Let's talk about odd number intervals real quick. So here is what a third looks like. It looks like the beginning of a snowman. And you notice something about it? The, no the notes match space and space. So three, a fifth, right away they match and there's an even space between them. Seven's a little higher up, so that would be like the bottom space and top space, but not quite the whole thing. And that uh, you have two even spaces in between. And there's our octave, so remember they don't match. And then lastly, this, this is one you don't have to know as much, but this is a ninth, which is an octave plus one. And they match. How about that? Quiz time, what interval is this? Now it starts on a line, but do they match? Yes, they do. You got a B here and F here with an even line in the middle. I would say that that's a fifth. Let's just practice a couple more and then we'll move on. What about this one? What interval is this? The first question you should ask yourself, do they match? And they don't match, right? You have space on the bottom, line on the top. They look pretty far apart, almost the entire staff. So I would say that that's an octave. And sure enough, you got F down here and F up here. That's an octave. There's a little bit more to intervals, but at first I would just start out trying to identify the number from sight. Like what is this one? We actually did this one already, it's a third. But one thing I wanna tell you, there's a secret here. And that is with seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, so seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, remember that, they have a minor version of each of them. So, he, so from F to G, which would look like this, is what we call a major second. That's like the beginning of a major scale, and they have to be a whole tone away from each other, just meaning that two half steps, basically. Now, what if I lower this note a half step? It's still a second, right? One, two, but now we only have a half step between each one, and we call that a minor second. So a second, if it's a whole step above or a whole tone, that's major, that's minor. Let's go back to that major third that we had a second ago. So like I said, seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, a third can also be altered by lowering that top note, and we call that a minor third, which would look like this on the staff. Question, what interval is this? Do they match? No, they don't match, so therefore it's an even number interval, and I would say that that's definitely a sixth. And what did I tell you about six just a minute ago? There is a minor version of that just by lowering that top note. So there is a minor six, a minor seventh would be that. So just be careful that there's different versions of them. But I, at first I would just focus on identifying the number interval. That's gonna help you the most reading music. Now, if you're asking the right questions, you're saying, Tim, 
you mentioned you mentioned mentions you mentioned seconds thirds right six and sevenths but what about fourths and fifths well let's take a look so here we have a fourth that would be from c to f and remember that when we were changing the intervals before to their minor versions we were lowering that top note by a half step so if we have from c to f and that's a fourth what if i lower it a half step that's actually a major third so there really is no minor fourths in most cases uh just be aware of that so that's why i said seconds thirds and what else did i say sixth and sevenths have minor versions fifth is another case let me show you so if you have a fifth and you lower the top note oh hey you can have a minor fifth right except they don't call it that they call it a tritone and the reason is that the difference between this note and this note is three whole tones so remember that a half tone is moving up every note like that and a whole tone is every other note like that so therefore if you have c you move up a whole tone you move up another whole tone and you move up a third whole tone that is when you get your tritone which would look like that you may be saying tim how do i practice my intervals well go to musictheory.net once again click on exercise and there is an interval identification right there i recommend doing about 50 of them a day and i would start with intervals that you know about by clicking on this little gear up top it's time for level six and then there's actually a level after that this one is advanced pattern recognition which is what i told you about in the intro so once you start looking at things like intervals and you know using our mnemonics and all these things together to read notes what i want you to do is start to identify patterns in your music that you recognize and you're gonna have to learn some music theory to do this but some things you want to be on the lookout for are scales, arpeggios, cadence patterns, bass patterns such as the Alberti bass, ornamentations such as trills, and of course, chords. By being able to identify all these things from sight, you're going to be able to look at, at notes in advanced groupings instead of individual notes. That's really what this has all been about, if you think about it. First, we started with individuals with our mnemonics, then we built into skipping in thirds, intervals, and then we're branching out into all these theory concepts. So you're like, Tim, how do I learn all of these different things that I just talked about that you need to be on the lookout for? Well, you can pick up a music theory book. This is a great supplementary book. It doesn't really have any lessons to it. I mean, they'll introduce you to some topics and then have you do some uh, worksheets on that. But if you want something with a little more instruction, you can check out my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. A lot of courses on playing piano and theory over there. Code YouTube, 15% off. But let's get on to number seven. Originally, this was only gonna be a level six strategy, but I added in a seventh level after some thinking because sight reading is actually where you wanna go once you've learned how to look at all these patterns and stuff. You wanna be developing your sight reading. Here are some really quick sight reading tips. Ideally, you should be sight reading through something that is a little bit below your current playing level. So if you're currently playing stuff that looks, I don't know, like this, you shouldn't be playing anything with that has more ink on the page than that or has, has any kind of chords or key signatures that you're not already familiar with. The whole goal of sight reading is being able to play from the beginning of an example to the end of an example with relatively few mistakes and picking an easier example is the way to go. Tip number two is you wanna take a minute or two to analyze the piece before you begin playing. It's gonna give you a lot better chances of success playing through it. Again, you're gonna to wanna to be on the lookout of all the things I talked about, chords, different patterns, like what the key signature is, time signature, all that stuff. And then the third quick tip I have for sight reading is to sight read every day. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And you get better at sight reading by picking up this sight reading series. I have a course over on my website, of course, Piano Lessons on the Web. But uh, this course, uh, this series of books is really good because it starts at level one. Super duper easy stuff. This is called Improve Your Sight Reading. This is by Paul Harris. You can definitely find these on Amazon. I have one final tip for you at the end, but I have a quick question for the comments. 
Do you want me to make a whole lesson in depth on just sight reading, the last thing that we talked about? I really could um, go over a lot more examples and give you more tips on that. So let me know if you want that in the comments. I always love to hear back from you guys. Uh, you know, hearing back from your ideas really helps me make the channel a whole lot better. And I always just like to hear from you. But here is the final tip for today. And it's the most important tip. And that is to watch this next lesson right here. So if you wanted to catch up on how to read music, which was this lesson, and you need to work on your rhythm, you need to watch this one right here. It's the common rhythm patterns you need to know. And if you watch that one already, check out this one. I'm sure it'll be just as good. Your piano teacher, Tim here, and I'll see you next time. Disappeared. I just see I'm busy.